thousand strong Aintree racecourse for the biggest event of the steeplechasing world, the Grand National. Even umbrella weather won't stop the crowds coming to this almost legendary racing classic, and no amount of gypsies' warnings will stop them having a flutter. The 30 runners this year, with Cop, an Irish entry, a last-minute favourite. The second favourite is Brian Marshall's mount, Early Mist. Matu Vu, a much-fancied runner, is owned by the Queen Mother, and there to see how he runs is the Queen, the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret. Lord and Lady Derby welcome the royal visitors who journeyed from London the evening before. It's nearly time for the runners to face the tapes, so down in the paddock the jockeys take their seats. This is Steel Lock, a 66 to 1 chance. Making a return visit is Little Yid, number 13, here with Matu Vu, number 16. Her Majesty shelters from the drizzle as she makes her way to the royal box. The rain that's been falling for many hours will make the going extremely soft and may upset a whole host of predictions. Up at the tapes, there's a bit of trouble getting the field into line. Last year's victor, Royal Tan, plays up a bit, but they'll soon be away. And they're off with nearly four and a half miles to go. Several jumps have been made less dangerous this year, and because of the heavy going, the water jump is completely abandoned. Nevertheless, 29 of the trickiest fences in the world still make the national the toughest steeplechase of them all. Down goes Blue Envoy, and now Mariner's Log. No one's badly hurt. Meanwhile, Moogie, ESB, Queer Times, Matuvu and Cop are leading the field towards fence number two. And all's well with the field as they race away. Some idea of the slippery going is shown by our slow motion camera. Here's that first jump ahead. Moogie, Matuvu, ESB take it easily, but watch two others take a tumble. camera at jump number three as Sundew, Steel Lock, Queer Times and Matu Vu take it almost together. All seems well for the moment but there goes another. The field's beginning to thin out already. Now for the fabulous Beaches Brook, graveyard of many a punter's hopes. And Beaches lives up to its reputation. ESB, who'd been going well, is a casualty and so is Roman Fire. Now to jump number seven, and Sundew, Steel Lock, Moogie, Queer Times, and Matuvu are still making the running. But Moogie has tumbled. That ends his chances. The canal turn is next, a tricky jump that's got a sharp left turn on the far side. Sundew has a good lead by now. Early Mist is in second place. Royal Tan is there, and Queer Times is moving up. Sundew races for Valentine's Brook. Matu Vu, Steel Lock, Queer Times, and now Gentle Moya are closing. Slow motion reveals their full grace and balance as they take the six-foot jump. They're still in much the same order as they come down to jump 11, though no response has fallen out. Now an incident that shows the real danger that faces every jockey who tests his nerve against the national fences. Number 12 coming up. Sundew is nearly in bad trouble with a loose horse. Matuvu is in second place now. Gentle Moyer and Steel Lock are well up. There's only two thirds of the field left by this time. Keeping a sound lead, Sundew is making a fast pace. Steel Lock's moved behind him with Matuvu plugging away in third place. They come to the 15th jump, known as the chair. Sundew's still in the lead, but a loose horse cuts right across him. He nearly went down that time. Matu Vu's in second place again. Steel Lock is third. Gentle Moya, Tudor Line and Gigolo are the nearest challengers. For the first time in Grand National history, the field misses the abandoned water jump, so on they go for the second time round. Matu Vu has a slight lead from Sundew as they turn away from the stands and back towards the 14 jumps they have to tackle again. The heavy going is making it one of the most gruelling nationals for years, but the leaders look full of stamina yet. 
Prayer Times is third now, and Carey's Cottage has moved up behind him. Gentle Moyer is there, so is Gallant Tudor Line, second last year. Matu Vu and Sandu are neck and neck as they race away. Up towards Beaches for the second time, and there's little change in the order. And this time, the famous fence doesn't claim a single victim. Next on the list is the canal turn. There's been a reshuffle by now. Ma Tu Vu has gone, and with him hopes of a royal win. Queer Time safely over has the lead. Clary's Cottage, Tudor Line and Sun Dew are his nearest rivals. Now it's a duel between the Tafe brothers for Pat Tafe rides Queer Times, and his brother Tom rides Clary's Cottage. Now the jump that took such a toll on the first time round. And there goes Sundew and Steel Lock. Sundew's jockey PJ Doyle takes a pounding from the stragglers. The brothers take fight out the grim battle for the lead. Into the 28th jump and both are over safely. a towering tussle, but there are only two more fences to go. But Jump 28 has another victim to claim yet. Sun Class puts jockey power down, but far from out. Both struggle to their feet, determined to get home in the same way they started. At the same time, a rival comedy turn on the far side of the fence is giving the crowds a spot of free entertainment. Meanwhile, Carey's Cottage, Queer Times and Tudor Line are heading for the last fence. Tom Tafe fights to keep Carey's Cottage in front, but Brother Pat won't be shaken off. And over they go, all safe and sound. Queer Times has got the lead from Tudor Line. Carey's Cottage has dropped back to third place, and it's going to be a victory for Queer Times. Still going magnificently, he strides on towards the post. And Queer Times, who cost his owner only 300 guineas, has won the national. A 12-length victory for a superb horse ridden by a great Irish jockey. Queer Times gives trainer Vincent O'Brien a sensational record. In 1953, he won with early mist. Last year, he did it with Royal Tan. And now Queer Times makes it his grand national hat-trick. Owner Mrs. Wellman wins nearly £9,000. Vincent O'Brien takes it all calmly, as calmly in fact as the winner, Queer Times.